Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. And I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. I seem to be moving in celebrity circles these days. Yeah, Kanye West and I. When rapper producer Kanye West used the term mental slavery to express his beliefs about slavery, suggesting that enslaved Africans were mentally enslaved because they stayed in that position despite their numbers, there was instant widespread outrage and condemnation. I, however, agree with Mr. West, and I'll tell you why. Mental slavery is far more destructive than physical slavery. Though we see no physical chains, the devastating effects are felt and transmitted across generations. Mental slavery is a state of mind where one becomes trapped by misinformation about self and the world. The legacy of slavery has promoted the direct association between being African and being inferior. It also promotes ways of thinking which continue to impede growth and development. Ali Shahada correctly states that the African mindset is, at best, an observer complaining about the world as opposed to being a change agent in the world. Mental slavery invariably leads to a warped view of reality and the world in general. The manipulation is mostly perpetrated via mainstream media, religion and education. This ensures that we receive our information without any suspicion from the very same people that said Africa is a dark and savage continent. We're brainwashed to believe that we are better off with them than with our own people. Every concept from notions of beauty to values is infected by this disorder. We allow the West to dictate our standard of beauty, making bleaching and cosmetic surgery highly desirable. Africans on the whole prefer to demonstrate wealth through material things such as shoes, clothes and cars, instead of through educational development like others. Failure to know oneself results in failure to identify self-interest, making us an obvious target for exploitation and oppression. Another telltale sign of mental slavery is victimhood. This is a condition that must be done away with at all costs, as it serves no positive purpose, but as a statement of inferiority, not pride. Everything is how somebody did something to us, how someone hates us, how someone stole from us, but what are we doing about it apart from complaining? Mental slavery diminishes creativity, creates inertia, and thus makes us impotent. We know what we want, but unaware of how it is obtained in the real world. We can see the importance of history and owning media, factories, and so on, but all those small steps on the ladder that lead to success, such as unity, organization, investment of time, support, spending, escape us. We want a revolution, but we do not want to lose anything. We want to be healthy, but we eat rubbish all day. We want justice in the world, as long as it doesn't cause us to lose something. The first step to recovery is recognizing we're inflicted with this disorder. Then understanding who we are as a people, our history and value system. The next is to stop waiting for the system to change. Rather, we should use all the tools at our disposal to do for ourselves. Instead of waiting to receive free handouts, we need to realize the necessity for education, planning, strategy, dedication, and hard work. Which education are you referring to now? 
to be because the only meaningful ed- the only meaningful education today is, Western education. is somehow Western education. You know, but I I, I want I to agree. also understand you know, with you somehow. So there's a big problem here. I see people. You go to the embassy. You behave. You know, you are trying to protect your visa because you believe <laughs> these people are superior. If I don't yeah. behave now, they won't give me a visa. Exactly. And, and yeah. if you feel, look. I just want to explore the world. If you give me, fine. If you don't give me... Uh, yeah, you might even get the visa, yeah. you know. So they will see you as, oh, this man is being normal. Mm-hmm. He's, you know? Mm. So I, I understand you that this idea of, you know, you just box yourself in that corner and then um, expecting that, you know, this is the way the world will behave. It's the same issues I was talking about last time. I don't, I'm not one to conform to norms. Oh, you must be with one woman. You must be with. Uh, this is how Igbo ways. <laughs> African as your ways wife is in on it. Is we have no problem. Different. No, I'm, I just gave an example. Mm. African ways are different. Yeah, exactly. Speaking in the third person. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, so we have our, our standards, <laughs> our morals, our way of life. You can blend the two because the world has become a global thing. Uh-huh. But to be trapped in one and believe that is the best, mm. that Christianity is the best, mm. uh, than my own uh, Alika worshiping. That I will not agree, mm-hmm. because that is what the white man told you. For me, it's a mental slavery. Mm-hmm. And that's why Bob Marley says that emancipate yes. yourself emancipate from yourself. mental slavery. None better self can free our minds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think it's somewhere in between, because listening to you, what came to my mind is that, like what you cast off saying, is that the world is such that if somebody is, has already developed and mm-hmm. done something, mm-hmm. and you can see that what they're doing is working, there's nothing you wrong in you. learning from them. Absolutely. You, you know, those who have a chip on their show and say, I won't take the white man's things, they're sure. fooling themselves because yeah. you can't avoid that. The world is interactive. I mean, but but what, sorry, what came to my mind also was, you know, the, the way these things work, when you look at a classroom setting, it's like peer pressure. A child who knows where they're from, they go into a classroom. Sometimes when they see people who are maybe they're used to defining themselves according to material things, they get into the class and they start saying, but my friend did mm-hmm. party pack, I want to do party pack. Right. But if you instill in the child that the value of who you are is not tied up with those things, think hopefully, so that's the same way I see Western mm-hmm. influences or any influence. If you know who you are and you know that what, who you are is not tied to mm-hmm. external things, then it doesn't matter where you are in the world. It doesn't matter what they dangle in front of you. You won't accept it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Just, just, you know, she has said exactly said all, my right? point. And, you yeah. know, we can't deny the fact that, you know, the Western culture, they're more developed and, you know, they have... Um, let me let me use the word everything beautiful, mm. right? That we I, I will question that. Well, that's why I said let me exactly. use the word. Mm. They have beautiful things that is worthy of admiration. So there is nothing wrong to admire and to also want to you know adopt these things for yourself. Right. But in doing so, what values are you holding on to? What mm. values are you keeping exactly. for mm. yourself? Mm. So you know, I think it's just being able to strike a balance between globalization and you know. St- you know, protecting your own your culture. Own, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because it's just like me, yeah. I would, if not for family, I mm. would rather spend Christmas in the village mm. than spend Christmas in New York. Mm. Because for me, it's, it's yeah. not me. Mm. But for somebody else, you know, that's life. Mm. So it's, there's a balance. Mm. There's yeah. always a balance. There's always a but balance. there are some people who are, that's why you call it slavery. Mm. Mm-hmm. They are slaves to distance. And they feel oh, without this one, they really cannot, you, they can't, you know, they can't define who they are. Yes. And so until you want to go out, okay, I, I, I visited a lady. Let's take a walk. Let's sit down somewhere. And she says, ah, no, I don't have makeup, so I can't go out like oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So she's a slave to makeup. Yeah. 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 In the end, we're still living in a technological mm. world, and they're far That's ahead the balance. of us. Then you can come back and particularize. Yes, no, because I, I, like I understand school, what you're saying. Like yeah. law school, go and study law in yeah. Harvard. You yeah, that's why I said, oh, I get if, you. if I pick yeah. up a motivational book re- written by somebody from California. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, yeah. his, I get your his point. style, his uh, environment. I can't read it. Yeah. You know, by yeah. the time you finish reading it, you come to the house, there's no light. You, how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah. But he doesn't have to deal with all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I said, I, I Okay, I get you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, just to add to this, mm. We need to understand who we are as a people. The funny thing is that the the Europeans, the Westerners, they understand who okay. Africans are. Like my professor would say, if you are not born with a silver spoon, make one and put it in your yeah. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> now that's, that's what we're talking about <laughs> right there. Motivational speaker. <laughs> that's it. From Nigeria. Well, there you go. I don't know Tom if you he understands. yourself in this whole mental slavery thing, but mm. you know, hopefully if you can identify yourself, maybe you should start doing something about it. So your feedback is definitely a valuable part of our self-evaluation. On governors using religion as a tactic to deceive and blind people, Akinyela Jones says, finally, people start waking up 
to the realization that re religion is a scam. Um, I'm not sure that was what we were saying, Akinyele. However, on the same topic, Batinji Jokes and Fitness says, stop deceiving yourselves on this because you all know what to do. Come on, side talkers. Huh. <laughs> Batinji Jokes and Fitness seems to be an action person. On the diamonds among the rough, Bola Alabi says, Wow, I'm very impressed with both of them, Makinde and Babagana. Well done, guys. Thanks, Bola. We keep at holding them accountable, though. Lecky Jays gives us an excellent scorecard, too. He says, I predict Plus TV Africa will soon become the best TV station in Nigeria. Hallelujah. I'm going to drop that right there. Yes, we claim it. Thank you, Lecky Jays. We say a big amen to that. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekenes says, we can't go forward without first going back. Back to our history after the break.